animal as it's eating and sleeping. Human development and the history of puzzles are intertwined. We're attracted to puzzles because we like to spot and explore patterns. And spotting patterns is a key to almost all stages of human learning. There is no culture on, without puzzles, and there is no human being alive who does not understand what a puzzle is. By a show of hands here, who here has pieced together a jigsaw puzzle before? See some hands? Ooh, okay, good. <laughs> and uh, who here has done a Sudoku before? The numbers and the boxes? Nice, I like seeing hands up there, that's good. And uh, who here has solved a crossword before? Yes, almost every hand is up. Good, the talk is relevant. Lots of puzzle doers here, good. Well, nearly half of all North Americans, 40% to be exact, enjoy piecing together a jigsaw at least once a year. And one in five puzzles at least monthly. So, much like you're probably already doing, we puzzle to relax, for fun, and to relieve stress. Now, it's not just 21st century North Americans who do puzzles. Here's something puzzling to think about. Puzzles emerged at the dawn of human history, and puzzles have existed in human societies for millennia across the globe as well. Infamous examples of this include the Riddle of Sphinx, the Towers of Hanoi, and the Cretan Labyrinth. As you can see behind me, the Crete Labyrinth was an elaborate and confusing structure. It's now more popularly known as a maze. It was designed to hold the myth of the Minotaur. The labyrinth was so well built that its constructor, Dea Dallas, could barely escape it after he built it. That's a good puzzle. The Towers of Hanoi puzzle. Its goal is to move the entire stack of disks to the rod on the far right. Now, this is done by obeying a few simple rules that I won't go into today. According to the legend though, when the last move of the puzzle is completed, the world will end. But don't worry, it's thought to take 585 billion years to finish, so I think we're okay. And many of you are familiar with the infamous Riddle of Sphinx. In Greek legend, the Sphinx devoured all travelers who could not solve the riddle he posed. So, by nature, humans are very curious, not just cats. <laughs> we see puzzles as chaos, and we want to arrange that chaos to create order. But, if you're like most people, you'll likely think puzzles are done for only pure entertainment. But, I'm here today to change your mind. I loved puzzles, loved, since I was young. I've had the opportunity to study them, as well as create them for local newspapers and even national campaigns like cereal boxes. And if there's one thing I know for sure, it's that puzzles are more than just a game. And I'm also here to convince you today to incorporate puzzles into your lifestyle. So let's start with, what makes a puzzle a puzzle? Well, first thing, it must be challenging to the solver. It can also have different methods to solve. Think about that for a second. Let's explore that first point just a little bit more. If a puzzle has to be inherently challenging, what's a puzzle for you might not be a puzzle for me. Let me show you what I mean. Can you figure out which of the two lines behind me is longer? This is a molar lore illusion puzzle. Oh, well, I'm tricking you. Actually, the lines are the exact same size. So while this isn't a puzzle for most of us, it actually might be a puzzle for kids or those who introduce to this puzzle for the first time. But here's an example that might be a puzzle for more of us. Can anyone complete this equation? I'll give you about 10 or 12 seconds to think about it. <laughs> No pressure, no pressure. Look through it, talk to your neighbor. <laughs> Chances are you couldn't solve it. Now, ignore the time. <laughs> but if we were to work through it, we would need to work backwards and fill in the boxes to make sure that they equal 66. An equation would most likely simplify this. 
with these puzzles, especially this one, it could easily take hours and more brain power. And this is an example of what constitutes a puzzle for most of us. But the question still remains, why should we bother deliberately trying to challenge ourselves by solving puzzles? Well, for one, puzzles introduce us to problem solving. As well, they allow us to naturalize difficult problems that we encounter in our real lives every day. One example of this, mathematical questions, kind of like the one we just did. When we solve puzzles, we need to be able to compare hidden information that we connect to to prior knowledge, already stored in our brains, and thus we create new ideas. Puzzles are the perfect way to exercise problem solving as well, because we associate puzzles of any kind, from crosswords to escape rooms with an imminent, well-defined reward, winning the game or solving the puzzle. Everything you do is a step towards getting that reward. And inattentive mistakes, they aren't so costly. Here, impulsively running through different ideas, even the nonsensical ones, only helps. If they turn out to be incorrect, nothing is lost. Let's take a look at this puzzle. A box truck was attempting to pass under a large bridge. As the truck driver approached a structure, he felt that there was enough room to clear the bottom of the steel and concrete deck of the bridge. However, as he was passing under, he heard a loud screech and was now wedged under the bridge. He could not go neither forward nor backwards. How do you think we can get the truck out from under the bridge? So let's think about this. And let's go through this together. The options that we have are the following. Option one, let's sound out another truck to pull the vehicle free. But that won't work. That would actually destroy the vehicle. So we can't do that. Um, option two, what if we bring in road equipment to lift the bridge a few inches higher? Okay, no, that would just destroy the bridge's concrete, causing it to be structurally unsafe. Okay, let's try option three. Let's just cut off the top half of the truck. Okay, no, 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 that's just really silly. We can't do that and that won't work. Hmm, I think we need to get creative here. We obviously can't remove what's on top of the truck to make space above, but how about we target the bottom half of the truck? What if? We let the air out of the tires. That will make the truck drop ever so slightly, allowing us to move it out. Problem is then solved. So if you remember, I said earlier that puzzles can be solved in different ways. We actually just tried out two different approaches. The analytical method of trial and error, where we went through a few options and we realized it wouldn't work. So then we switched over to the creative way of thinking, and that's called lateral thinking. Lateral thinking relies on reasoning that's not immediately obvious. It encourages ideas you may not think of by relying on logic alone. Most of the time, we have to rewire the way we approach a problem. We have to switch up our methods, and it feels so, so good when that approach works. But we are so fascinated by chaos. And this feeling of a challenge and the anxiety, especially when we can't get the answer right away. We've all lost sleep over puzzles. I know I have. And we can stop thinking about the ones, especially when we've gotten started on them. Recent neuroimaging studies from Northwestern University suggest that there's a particular response, one that's strongly correlated with positive moods. It's observed in people's brains who are more likely to solve puzzles with sudden insight than with trial and error. So working on puzzles and problems that require back and forth switching from deep analysis to sudden out of the box insight is good for your brain health. It keeps you nimble and flexible. This cognitive flexibility is a powerful tool. You can use this type of thinking to solve real life problems. For example, getting to places faster or changing up your route or even simple things like choosing a place of where to go for dinner. More than being beneficial to our cognition, puzzles make an actual physiological difference in our brain. 
We solve a puzzle and create order. Our brain then releases dopamine, a neurotransmitter that regulates mood. It affects our concentration and our motivation as well. Dopamine is behind that intense happiness and that pleasure that we feel when we fit that last piece into a jigsaw puzzle. So here's another puzzle example. How many complete triangles are there in the following diagram altogether? Now note that figures can be comprised, or triangles, excuse me, of smaller congruent figures. So let's work through this puzzle together. We have to begin by numbering these segments. And then to continue, we put together these segments into triangles. So for example, one, two, and three are a triangle. But note segment four is not a triangle in itself. But four, one, and seven make an assembled triangle. Also, five is a triangle. So is two, three, five, and six. They make a triangle as well. Three, five, and six also make a triangle. And finally, five and six together also make a triangle. Together, when we keep doing this steps and then we run out of new triangles that we can piece together, turns out our answer is actually nine. Solving that crucial answer that's what we call the Eureka effect. It's that relief, pleasure, and triumph all at once. Aha, means I found it. <laughs> You've also just given your brain a rush of dopamine, making that a part of your daily life. What's the bad that can come from it? Maybe an addiction to puzzles? Not as bad as some of the other vices that are out there. But more than dopamine and pleasure, when we give our brain new experiences, challenges, tests, and yes, even puzzles, we strengthen cell connections so that our brain's overall function improves, regardless of age as well. To illustrate this, a study at the University of Aberdeen where researchers surveyed older participants in their 70s on their lifestyle practices and how frequently they engage in cognitively challenging activities since childhood. They then took brain scans. Well, what did they find? Elderly participants with the most puzzles and books under their belts had brains comparable to those of healthy controls who were 50 years younger. The elderly participants who did puzzles had the least beta amyloid protein uptakes in their brains. This is a major marker of Alzheimer's disease. And Alzheimer's brain is on the far right, or far left, excuse me. Those participants who did puzzles, that's their brain on the far right. Wow, what a difference puzzles can make. Prior to modern advances in medicine, the thought of reaching a centurion age seemed unimaginable. Brains were outlasting bodies, but now we're reaching a time where our bodies are actually outlasting um, our brains. The challenge is to ensure our brains are keeping up, just like how we work out our bodies. We need to start exercising our minds with puzzles as a part of an active and daily lifestyle. Now, you're probably wondering, Stace, this is really great and all, but beyond our brains, do puzzles really have an impact? They do. In 2010, researchers at the University of Washington were having trouble determining the structure of a protein enzyme that caused a Mason Pfizer monkey virus. This is a disease that leads to AIDS. They created Foldit, an online puzzle game about protein folding, where players use patterning and problem solving to fold the structure of the protein. The puzzle game was instantly so well received. Again, puzzlers wanted to create order out of that chaos. So, researchers had been working on the scientific problem for 15 years. Guess how long it took the gamers to solve it? It only took solvers 10 days. Whoa. <laughs> Scientists use these solutions to combat and eradicate misfolded proteins to find potential cures to many diseases. Puzzles are important in more ways than you might have thought. No wonder they've existed throughout centuries and have shown themselves in so many forms. They have truly stood the test of time. I urge you to take up puzzles and demonstrate how you can continue to pursue this ancient tradition besides, well, to better yourself, excuse me, and your experiences. Besides, 
Life is basically one big puzzle we're all trying to solve, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you.